Welcome to The Toxic Show. You are watching us from Oracle Television Network. It is such a beautiful time once again where we are able to discuss things that are just toxic and we are able to give you solutions. We are able to speak into your life because we know that God has got a good plan for you. And my name is Joyce W. Charles. I'm your host. And together with me, we have Apostle Michael. Welcome to our studios. Thank you very much. And today we have a, such a wonderful topic. Uh, I call it wonderful because I know lives are going to be changed once we deal with this because most of the times these serious things are swept under the carpet, but not here. So we're going to be talking about pulpit incest. And I know that is like a shocker to most of us. And when I say pulpit incest, it cuts through all religious uh, societies. And you find that uh, we have people in the house of God who feel comfortable to, you know, to engage sexually with their spiritual fathers or with their spiritual daughters. Apostle, mm -hmm. is this for real? These yeah. things happen. Yeah, this is a real issue that is inv has invaded the body of Christ. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it is something I have witnessed personally. All right. And uh, it's, it's not a fairy tale. Yeah. It's, it's a real canker that is slowly eating into the body of Christ mm -hmm. and, and from the head it is coming down to to the, 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 the least person in the church. All right. So when, when we talk of uh, pulpit uh, incest, yeah. uh, it's a very critical issue that we need to look at holistically. Why critical? Because it is something yeah. that even in the natural, let's talk about incest anthropologically. Yeah. Now, the, and the man called uh, Edvard yeah. is a great anthropologist. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote in his, uh, the, in his book, yeah. uh, The History of Marriage. Right. And he, he stated incest mm -hmm. as one of the taboos, the problems that affect human race in the natural sense, in the human physical aspect. Right. And he, he talked about how incest has a biological effect on people. Okay. So when biologically, when you study the human genes, yeah. when people are closely related right. and they have genetical problems, mm -hmm. it is going to be more predominant in their children yeah. when they marry right. from the same bloodline. Right. So uh, physiological de development gets affected. Yeah. They have uh, developmental problems, mm -hmm. mental development. Yeah. Then they have congenital diseases that come with the genes. Right. So it is something which in the natural setting is not allowed. Mm -hmm. In our African society, right. we, we have things like taboos. Yeah, we do. And incest yeah. is one of the major taboos. But I mean apostle. We are talking about the pulpit here. Yes. We should be the people who know so well what are the biblical taboos. Yes. Why are we busy doing this evil thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, mm. it is for us to know it yeah. and has the willpower to implement it. Uh -huh. You see, sometimes we, we tend to play down on such things. Right. And most of the times when it's coming, it doesn't come with horns. Okay. For you to realize <laughs> this is what is going to happen. How does it come? <laughs> it comes subtly. You you, uh -huh. you 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 see it creeping in gradually. Oh, she's my daughter. We spend time together. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you're feeling cold. Put your head on my lap. You uh -huh. I rub your back. So that's how it began. <laughs> so gradually. Uh -huh. It grows. It grows gradually. Uh -huh. Then you get there. So is it a demonic invasion that we are dealing with or is it some spiritual roots that we need to uproot in these people who are busy with this? We can look at it from both angles. All right. It can be demonically influenced All right. and it can be a characterial deficiency. All right. Because people get saved, yeah. your mind is still the same. You need to renew your mind. You're still seeing that beautiful girl <laughs> in the choir. You still <laughs> You're still seeing that beautiful woman. And she's an usher. <laughs> and your wife is right there. <laughs> but uh, you just can't take off your eyes from her. <laughs> so that's now is... Uh, that's that's normal. That's that's how a man... It's normal for your eyes for to see. For a, a, a man to know <laughs> he's a man. To recognize <laughs> when you see a beautiful woman, you will know this person is a beautiful woman. Yeah. But if you lose their ability to determine, then you're no more a man. <laughs> but you... <laughs> 
but okay. when, when it gets to the extent yeah. of you now responding to those things right that is where the problem comes so in. So how does a man of God not respond when she, he's surrounded with a bunch of beautiful women? I mean, Apostle. Uh -huh. And you know they come beautiful in church. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So... <laughs> now, the, the Bible says in First Peter chapter 1, yeah. from the verse number 4 to 6, mm -hmm. the verse number 4 ended by saying mm -hmm. that having escaped yeah. from evil desires. So these are evil desires. Evil desires in uh -huh. the first place. Right. Let's not look at it in its complicated essence as puppet incest. Yeah. It is an evil desire. desire. Let's simplify it yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. An evil desire. Yeah. Having escaped it, mm -hmm. add for this very reason, mm -hmm. add to your faith, make every effort mm -hmm. to add to your faith knowledge. Uh, then the verse number six said, unto knowledge, add self-control. So self-control comes there. <laughs> right. So... A, a man of God who doesn't have self-control yeah. is not a matured man of God. He's not a man of God. Okay. He's still a Christian All who is right. trying to, 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 to make it in, 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 in Christianity uh -huh. or in ministry. Yeah. Because a man of God, mm -hmm. it is expedient that you have self-control. Right. When you study the book of Titus, you realize the, the characters that has been stated. You should be a man who is not a novice, you, you should have self-control. Yeah. Bring your body under subjection. Mm -hmm. Paul said, yeah. for me not to be a castaway of the very thing that I preach, mm -hmm. I bring my body under subjection. Yeah. Because sometimes you must take an extra effort yeah. out of your normal human senses right. and make a conscientious effort, a mental effort yeah. to bring your body under control, under check and balances. <laughs> I, I say things like any yeah. man who cannot control his erection yeah. cannot control his destiny. Did you hear that? Any man that cannot control his erection, they cannot control his destiny. That is very serious <laughs> statement right there. I'm telling you, if your erection determines your direction, it will lead you into destruction. Jesus. <laughs> it is that serious. Oh, yes. So every time a man of God sees this beautiful girl and you can't control it because you will see them, but if you can't control yet wanting them, it means that your, your destiny is in danger. Yes, because these people. Yeah. So, well, I don't know about Kenya. Yeah. But in, 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 in from the, from where I come from. Ghana, yeah. Real things happen in the <laughs> spiritual realm, physically. All right. They could send you beautiful women in your church. Now, who sends? From the from other the dark side, world. from yeah. the dark world. All right. They come purposely to have sexual relations with you. So they'll come like a member, but they are an agent. They have come to bring you down. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. And right. when a man of God, you're on fire. Yeah. In the, in the spiritual realm, you are fortified. Uh -huh. you, you, okay. They, they cannot attack you. They cannot, like a man like Oracle. Yeah. It is a spiritual giant. Yeah. They cannot venture in, in yeah. the realms of the spirit. Right. Or else they die. Yeah. So what they will do is that yeah. they will strategically position certain people ladies yeah. who will come in the flesh yeah when you are able to fall in the flesh a hole has been created and they can pass through it uh -huh. so their intention is right. to bring you down yeah because they cannot in the spiritual mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so when they bring these daughters around you yeah you go around and, yeah and you fall yeah it is a great hole that has been a loophole that has been created in your ministry and it's going to affect lives oh god so it is very serious. It doesn't end in incest or the pulpit. Mm -hmm. It goes down to your destiny. It, it goes down to the destiny of the ministry mm -hmm. that you're heading. Mm -hmm. Because yes. I mean, if you strike the shepherd, the, the sheep, sheep will scatter. scatter. That's a great scripture. Yeah. Once you strike the shepherd, yeah. so the intention is when the leader is yeah. contaminated, mm -hmm. the members have nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> they will fall all the same. They will fall. Yeah. That's why you find in the churches it's so common to find uh, elder so and so is sleeping with sister so and so, mm -hmm. uh, or sister so and so is eyeing, you know, brother so and so, deacon so and so. It's actually like something that is common and most of the time it's not dealt with. Yeah. And I think uh, pulpit or let's call it church incest 
it is something that possibly is showing us what is happening in the society mm -hmm. because you see spiritual things are more real than the, the physical, physical things, things. Yeah. so when we are saying uh, in the society a father is living with her daughter mm -hmm. let us first look at what is happening in the house of god right. because sometimes if you're not able to rectify what we're dealing with as a church how do we rectify the society we cannot yeah that is why i'm saying it is a very crucial topic to yeah. deal with yeah because the church mm -hmm. is a reflection as a reflection on the society right because it's the very people from the society who are coming into the church you're right we are taking them from the world and bringing them to the church and when they come to the church and this is what they will see when they go into the world when they go back home those are the things they are going to perpetrate uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. A, a father sleeping with a daughter getting yeah. her pregnant yeah and and you are frowning on it in the society but a bishop sleeping with a spiritual daughter yeah it is something you must get tell it is something you must really really eschew it from our society from mm -hmm. the church yeah as, as a matter of fact yeah such things makes the ministry lose power okay so when there is incest in the ministry mm. one of the things that possibly you're telling us will happen you will not see the work of the spirit because the spirit of god is power it will not manifest okay Bible said that when the Spirit of God comes, so you shall receive power. Yeah. So the, the very manifestation of the Spirit of God is power. The right. evidence is power. Yeah. So power will be lost from the church. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the head, the soul conduit, yeah. is contaminated. The soul uh -huh. conduit yeah. has been perverted. The soul right. conduit has been tarnished in the realms of the Spirit. Right. How can you be so comfortable as a man of God preaching yeah. And you're looking at the face of somebody you just had something to do with yeah. the last night mm -hmm. and you're and, and, and you're preaching yeah are you sure you can deliver the word of god <laughs> with, with, with with the spirit of god you're just going to speak your mind yeah you're just going to be emotional with the people yeah. you're just going to excite the people and and there will be no impact that mm -hmm. is why people uh, I, I have a message i call it preaching is powerful but why are people not changing i think that's a <laughs> message we all need to hear yeah. Preaching is powerful. But why is the people not changing? Right. You look at the preacher himself, he just preached something powerful, mm. but the power of God was not there. Uh -huh. Because when the spirit of God is devoured of the word of God, yeah. it is just a literature. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, because of the sin in the house of God, mm. we are dealing with literature. We are calling it powerful, but it's not bringing <laughs> us any change. But you and me know when the spirit of God is in a place, mm. miracles are inevitable. Why? Where are the miracles of old days? Uh -huh. Where are the miracles that our fathers told us? Where are the miracles we witness? Uh -huh. Where are the miracles on, that we see on crusade grounds? Yeah. Ask yourself, why is it that yeah. miracles happen on crusade grounds more than in the church? Jesus, Think that is something it. to worry about. They are happening in the crusade, not on the altar that has <laughs> been erected, the altar that people have, you know, given, people have sacrificed. But God is not there. God is not He's there. He's showing out there, but not in the house of... That is very worrying. I'm telling you, okay. I, it's something I've, I've, I've looked at critically. Yeah. And, and I've realized that most great miracles have been on crusade grounds. Mm -hmm. It could be as a result of such things. Yeah. Because I believe that the same spirit that was present on the crusade ground yeah. should be the same spirit that is present in exactly. the church. Yeah. Yeah. So if an unbeliever can believe and get miracles, why should a believer yeah. believe and not get a miracle? That's a very tough question. <laughs> I think we need to go back and really ask ourselves, what are we busy with? Why is the Spirit of God not entrusting us anymore with His power? Could it be because of, uh, of sins like this? Mm. Now, uh, tell me, Apostle, you are a man of God. Mm. What happens that you, uh, 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 a man of God will look to a girl who you call your spiritual daughter, and all of a sudden, she's this woman mm. that you feel you want how does that transaction how is it in the mind of a man of god or let me say a man because mm. a man of god is a man that was what i was going to go to that <laughs> yeah every man of god is a man before yeah. the god was attached to yeah him. so we look at it from the basic unit of that persona yeah as a man mm -hmm. you see as, as a man it's it's i would say it's a normal thing like we said from the beginning when when you had you have a feeling. Yeah. It shows that you are still alive. 
it shows that menopause has not catch up with you. You still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're still but very functional. You're still very, very functional. Yeah. But your ability to have self-control, to bring yourself under check, that is what differentiates a man of God from a boy of God. Wow. All right. A man of God in the midst of all these will still stand. Despite the temptation, the, despite how beautiful they come, yes, despite how you know, sometimes they'll flash everything in front of you as a man of oh, God yes. because you have no control over that. I'm not going to cut, uh, cut it short. Yeah, I, I went to a church in, uh-huh. in, in, in Ghana, mm-hmm. and in that church, the ministers sit on the pulpit on yeah. the stage. Mm-hmm. And while we were sitting there, a lady was sitting in front, and the way she has, she's dressed, wearing a mini skirt, she yeah. has opened everything. And, Jesus. And I tried all I could. Yeah. I, I, if I remove my eyes, and then my eyes will come back. <laughs> I'll remove my eyes, then yeah. my eyes will come back. Yeah. Then I said to myself, I cannot keep punishing myself like this. Yeah. I told that Osha, yeah. go and tell that woman, yeah. everything she is selling and anything she is selling, there is nobody here to buy. <laughs> And the Asha went? The Asha went. Told what did, her, she what covered, happened? She covered herself. <laughs> then I was saved. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you, you, you understand? Uh-huh. You see, in, 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 in the whole Bible, there are only this thing that God tells you, yeah. run away from. Yeah. When it comes to sexual immorality, yeah. sexual things, sin that comes with sex, Bible admonishes us to flee, flee between flying and running. Your legs are not touching the ground. <laughs> you know, it says resist the devil yeah. and the devil will flee from you. Yeah. But when it comes to a man and a woman, it tells us to flee. flee. So don't wait and make yourself strong and think I'm going to oh, overcome this thing. Oh, I'm going to overcome. Oh, yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. And you're entertaining her. Yeah. She's wearing all the things, showing her cleavages, and you're not saying anything about it. Uh-huh. First day, second day, first yeah. month. And you're entertaining the thought when you're even lying there with your wife, you're thinking about her. The next step And you're is chatting that and texting text- and, and sexting. <laughs> so nowadays, sexting, you know, sexting is when you, you, you know, you're communicating sexual stuff to each phone other sex. on the phone. Yes. So nowadays, sex is not just basically the having best- something. Yes. We can have it on the phone and we, we are good to go. <laughs> <laughs> the devil is a liar. Ah, shindui. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so when, when you are not able to have control on yourself yeah. as a man, mm-hmm. You have problem yeah. in your life. Mm-hmm. So I believe the primus qualification of a man of God is a man of God must be able to have self-control. Yeah. And in the self-control, perseverance. Right. Sometimes you have the self-control, but you cannot perceive, persevere for long. All right. It is short lived. <laughs> it is short lived. Today you're able to do it, but tomorrow you're like, no. no. She's beautiful. I just want this one. <laughs> just once. <laughs> yeah. And it becomes a hook. And I was talking with my one of my the uh, brother to my spiritual father. Mm-hmm. He has visited me here in Kenya. Yeah. And he was telling me mm-hmm. when we were discussing the topic, and yeah. he says that look, the devil sends people, and now that is what the devil is using women to do in ministries. When they see you are anointed and you are causing havoc in the realms of the spirit, yeah. they send these daughters who are so, and they don't send you just anybody. They send you people that they know that can... They will shake they you. Will shake you. They, they will like, yeah, when you look at them, you You're know like, this is yeah, a woman. Yeah. Yeah. You, you understand? Mm. And at the end of the day, they start blackmailing this man of God. And I think when it comes to blackmail, then this man is finished. He because then you have to now keep on doing what needs to be done according to this woman. To keep things under. Yeah, yeah. And it will, it will affect you psychologically, of course. emotionally, it right. will affect you spiritually. Uh-huh. Since you are affected on these three levels, mm-hmm. you become ineffective yeah. in ministry. Yeah. I have seen people who have given up on ministry mm-hmm. because of this. Right. I have seen so many things because of this. Um, when it comes to the spiritual or the pulpit incest, would you say then that when the enemy knows that this man of God is going to go very far, that is like the fashionable demon mm-hmm. <laughs> that the <laughs> devil will send. Yes. Because he knows if a man of God will fall into this sin, mm. it is almost impossible to recover. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because once you fall into this sin, yeah. it, it will take 
the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And once the devil, the devil knows that you don't have the capacity to come back, that yeah. is when he strikes the more. Uh -huh. Because his intention yeah. is to caput you, curtail you from the work you are doing. Yeah. You see, the pulpit insists we look at it at sexual immorality. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have seen uh, a spiritual father who married a spiritual daughter. Mm -hmm. y you understand? Yeah. And they got married in the Christian way. Yeah. And the marriage is doing very well. Yeah. But when you come to talk about it as a sexual immorality. Yeah. As having a sexual relation with somebody you are not married True. to. Yeah. In the church. Who is your child? You have bought this person in the spirit. You've been feeding them there. And all of a sudden... Urges, edges, yeah. desires. Yeah, I'm like, really? How do you even begin? <laughs> anyway, you when don't you go back. away. You stay right there because we're going to deal with this bull. We are taking it by the horns because we have to clean up our pulpits. We yeah. have to really clean up the church so mm. that we have the Spirit of God and the power of God at work once again because I believe it is high time. We see the move of God in the house of in God. In the house of God. But incest in the house of God is just in another level. I'm telling you. And it's like it's not being dealt with. And I believe once we come on break, we're going to discuss further on this. So don't change the channel. Stay right there and God bless you.